and welcome back to how to make a Unity air dialog editor. So, last time we dropped off at creating the dialog node data. So, let's create the other ones. Let me just quickly look up my notes, so I'm sure we are writing the correct things. That's always nice. So, we have now made the function for saving the dialog node the dialog node data, so let's make the saving function for the other ones. Oh. Come on, Mr. Private. So that would be start. Let's just make the start now. So start data node and just go save. Oh, we were going to call it save node data. And then simply say this one takes in a uh, start a node, and we're just gonna call it node data, right? Oh, we're just gonna call it node. Oh, we're just gonna call it node, and we are going to make a node data here. So, uh, start a node, start a node data, and this one we're just gonna call node data equals new. Oh, new. Data. Oh, I am clicking all over the place today. Here we go. All right, so now we need to actually save the data. And because I am lazy, I'm just going to go hippity hop city. So in the start, it's just in that. In the start node, you can see we need uh, the node uh, gun, which is pretty much its ID, and we need its position. That's pretty much all we need inside the start node. Oh, we of course need to return it. There we go. So now we just need to make one for. Oh, I'm apparently too fast. Fast and furious. So now we need to make one for the it node as well. Let's do that. Save node data. And we're going to plug in the end node, going underscore node. And we need to make an end node data. So end node data, and we're just going to call it node data. Equals new, end node. And we again just going to copy paste this part. And in here, we of course need to make the end node type equals node dot end node type. So here we are of course saving the end node type. And we need to return it. So node data. Uh, we is it because oh I'm too fast with the I I see. So we need the event. Event Data. Save node data. Uh, and that is of course an event. Uh, node we need to put in here. Underscore node. And we need to make an event node data. We're gonna call that node data equals new event node data. I think we're getting the point right now. Clippity clappity, and this is of course the uh, event OS equals just go node dot event OS. Oh, and I can see I don't keep my naming convention consistent, which is a bad thing. So we are going to fix that later. I don't feel like doing that right now. All right. So now we have actually made the function for saving them. So let's actually go up and actually do so the saving. So we're just gonna copy paste this part here three times. One, two, three. And we're of course going to change it from to start a node. Uh, in note and event. Note. There we go. 
let's just change the names. Let's just bibbidi babbidi boo. Oh, this of course needs to be small. Just to keep our naming convention correctly. Even for at some places we didn't. Alright, so we of course also need to save them in the correct list. So we need to save the starter node in the starter nodes. And the int nodes in the int nodes. And the event nodes in the event nodes. So now we are also saving them the correct place. So our find function here will then take in every node in the entire graph view. And for each of them we will check which node are you? Are you a dialog node, starter node, int node, and event node? And depending on what type of node it is, we have a specific save function for it. So if it's a dialog node, we tell it it needs to be saved like this. If it is starter node, we tell it save it like this. End node, save it like this. And event node, save it like this. Good. So let's actually take this function and plug it into our save. We also need uh, the edge, and the edge needs to come before. Uh, I don't think it does any difference though. So let's plug in our reference. That is, of course, the dialog uh, container. So we're telling it w where it should save it. Now there's one more function that we need to add. And I'm just going to check my notes quickly so I don't misspell it. And that is the fact that um, when saving in runtime, we also need to tell the editor that we have changed it. So we need to go in and tell it that it has become dirty. And that sounds kind of weird, but that is how Unity wants it to be called. Well, what Unity wants to be called. So we need to make the, uh, the reference. And I think the reference we added was the Unity editor. And when we of course set it to dirty, well, set dirty, we need to tell what has been set to dirty. And that is of course the dialog container. Uh, when you're saving a scriptable object in runtime, you need to tell it that it has been changed in runtime. And Unity's way of doing that is to mark it as dirty. That's kind of weird. And then we need to tell Unity to actually save assets. So we're gonna go as a database dot save assets. So first we are telling it that this has been changed in runtime, and afterwards we're telling it please save all the all the assets. So this should um, should tell it that it has been changed, and this down here should save the change. So let's just save that and actually go in so the button actually save it. And that is in dialog uh, editor window. We're just gonna roll all the way up. We need to add the reference for it. We're gonna private dialog, and if I could spell, that would be nice. Dialog save. And we're just gonna call it save and load. And this is of course a field, so we're gonna make it small. And we wanna when you call it. Let's just do it here. As we need a reference to our graph view, might as well do it where we make the graph view. So now we can save. We will we'll have to roll down to our save button. Away with this and go save dot save. I of course need a reference to uh, the dire, the current dialog container. However, we also want to make sure that our current dialog container is not null. So we don't try to save it if it doesn't exist. That's always a good idea. Alright, so let's save this and go in and check if it works. So as you can see right now, there is nothing in it. So we're going to open up this one here. Let's create a starter node. And make a dialog node. 
and let's just create an event node, an end node, uh, another event node, uh, another event end node. So let's set this node to repeat and this one to go back to start. Connect them just so. Let's make three choices. There we go. And save. And as you can see, we have changed, saved all the links. So there should be one, two, three, four, five, six. Wonderful. And we have two end nodes, a lot of two event nodes, sorry. And one starter node, two end nodes, and one dialog node. Let's open the dialog node. And one thing you'll probably already notice right now is that you can't actually see the text box. And if we open up the, uh, what do you call it, the patch here, we can actually also not see the text in here. And that's for, because for some reason in Unity's um, 19, uh, 20, 20, no, yeah, 2019, you for some reason you can't see it, but in the new 2020.2, I think, yeah, uh, you can see it. And that was the version that I made my my first, uh, what do you call it, test thing, test scenario in, where I could see it. So you will need to have that or the OTAN inspector installed. The OTAN inspector is a plugin that you can buy off the marketplace. Uh, which just makes the uh, interface a lot prettier and easier to operate in. But uh, you cannot see it here, but it is saving it. But it's uh, it's rich for me to say it is saving it, but you, you can't actually check if it's doing it. So, yeah. <laughs> but uh, how about we just, in the next video, make the load function, so we can actually see if it did actually is saving it, so we can load it in. So. Just know that that is the reason why you cannot see it. It's because you need to use 2020.2 um, uh, and upwards, or else uh, because they had added a new interface UI. And if you install that one and upwards, uh, you should be able to see it, or else you need to install the OTAN inspector. Uh, well, see you in the next video.